All right, what up, everybody? Thank you for joining us for a special midweek episode of Degreelessness, starring not only me, the People's Champion Shanghai Pete, but also my and your very good buddy in the mix, Uptown Bobby. What's up, Uptown Bobby? What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's poppin'? So we have a few things we want to get into today and just kind of bullshit about, but this is also just going to kind of serve as a proof of concept, or we're just going to we're just going to kind of blather about uh, random shit, and we'll see if anybody likes it. And uh, you let us know in the comments down below if you do or do not, and uh, we may or may not react accordingly, depending. So yeah. typical. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing that I want to address <laughs> is something that we were texting about last night. Or this morning, I don't really remember. But a whole bunch of rumors all of a sudden spilled out everywhere, almost simultaneously late last Spilling night. out of every hole. <laughs> about the Switch 2 being announced. Well, I guess the first half of that is debunked because some people were saying it might even be as soon as today. And it so that definitely did not happen. But mostly it was people saying that it, it were, basically we're on the verge we're on the verge, the very edge of it being announced. It could be any day now. Um, Bobby, what are, what are your thoughts on that, just in general? Uh, Switch all right, two, we'll go. start with two-word synopsis, highly skeptical. Right. <laughs> first, <laughs> right. First, and, first and foremost, I mean, anytime someone says it's going to happen this day or the next day, I'm really skeptical. Second of all, I mean, just pragmatically speaking, we're already into the Tuesday in Japan I, it's I don't know what time is it in Japan right now. The business day is starting on Tuesday in Japan, more or less. So they could be going in to get ready to make this announcement. I mean, I, these things are usually done during American business hours, right? I don't know. Um, that's I think that's an important consideration. But also, I just like I, I, there's no clear indicator or signal to me that this is going to happen in the next two days. But the thing that I brought up that even though I'm the person who's like, all right, I don't believe it's going to happen until it actually happens. I saw some argument that the only title on Nintendo's calendar that's a big name title for early next year is like the Donkey Kong Country remaster, which I don't even know if I was know if I realized that was happening. But other than that, it's like Metroid Prime 4 is coming, but that's kind of really ambiguous in the future. Nintendo is does not really have anything huge on the horizon right Brothership, now. Brothership, and... which just dropped, was their biggest right. thing. And as right. unless I'm mistaken. That was what they're closing out the year with, I think. Unless yeah, there's some I'm, some other major title. When's that? What's their uh, Princess Peach adventure game coming out? Uh, isn't that out? I don't think so. Let's check. Hold on. Uh, Do you yeah, know what it's and called. So, um, um, it's called Princess Peach Showtime. Showtime. And, yeah, right, 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 right. It's out. Wow, I got a seven out of ten from IGN. Ninety-three people liked it. I. No, there's no way that's out. Um, it says it launched March 22, 2024. Dude. What? This done been out. Here's 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 a game facts thread called "Just Beat Princess Peach." Honest review oh from thirty seven oh year old. On April 5th, You're right. This came out in fucking March. This here we are the premier video game channel. This people. Is not, <laughs> <laughs> this is not even oh. really my kind of thing, but I feel like I would have tried it. It right? was developed by Good Feel. Who? What else did they I do? Like that. Um, I did they did they do feel the magic? <laughs> they have oh man, that was great. Uh, they did Wario Land Shake It for Wii. They developed oh, wow, so shovelware in other words. <laughs> they did uh, they did Yoshi's Woolly World, which actually was Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. Okay, so this is that company that actually they, those the those most recent Kirby funny. game on Switch was actually kind of fun. It was yarn. two player. It was pretty yeah. No, it wasn't that was yeah? It? That was not Kirby's Epic Yarn. No, it was, it was something. something it was something else, but it was really good. I played that with Tana for a so, while. Princess Peach Showtime. So oh Princess my Peach God, Showtime it came did 1.2 yes. million copies as Seven of May. Ago. All right, well, I'm going to so grab a means, torrent of it right now. We're going to find in out In two later. months, it did over a million copies. So that's pretty interesting. But, but I don't I'm know. Really the curious. fact that it slipped completely under both of our radar is not exactly a good sign for Nintendo. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the thing is, it didn't. I knew it was out. That's why I said I know oh. it's out. It just, it, <laughs> I suppose that's true. I, I didn't, you did. I wasn't really interested in it. I played the Peach game that was on DS where she had a talking umbrella, and it was fully 2D. That was a really pretty game, but it was very basic. I remember it being extremely easy. Oh, I played that, I too. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, bad, actually. I, 
No, but I'm also not a huge fan of these Nintendo games, kind of generic 3D styles. You know, it's I'm not a fan of any game that's like got a basically a generic 3D mascot game. If that game were in 2D, I would be playing the hell out of it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's just it's not like w- yeah, way to take something that could have been u- unique and force it into the most basic, tired form of generic 3D pseudo action yeah. game. Well, I mean, that's, that's snore. to be fair, that's what my first impression is, and it's not a great one. So I'm trying to load from Nintendo alone, nintendo.com slash games slash coming soon. So here we go. Brother Ship comes out on the 7th of November. Oh, the oh next it, it leaked. It leaked last week. That's why I think it's out. That's why. The, okay, yeah. And this is the first Mario and Luigi game for Switch? I... I'm not sure, but I think so. I think so. Um, that's really interesting. Then the next the next game coming out from Nintendo, oh, they have Fitness Training 3, uh, Fitness <laughs> Boxing 3, your personal trainer coming on December 5th. But, like, there's there's some smaller games. Oh, I mean, okay, we're talking about Nintendo, Nintendo games, their games. Nintendo alone, the next yeah. one is Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. That's uh, Did you know that January that was a remaster? 6th. I thought it was a new game at first. It's I actually a remaster. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So they've got... There's, I mean, there's the there's the standard um, like third party games that are lined up. Like obviously DQ three, Dragon Quest three HD two D, oh. which I'm so hyped for, comes out in two weeks. They've got, um, I, man, Dude, even it's this packed you know, this co- next couple weeks. We got that new Dragon uh, Dragon Age game comes out in like three days, and then three weeks after that, we have got um, we've got DQ three HD two D. And, dude, I'm still trying to get through Zelda right now. I'm probably three-quarters of the way through it, but I'm still trying to bust through it. I'm in the middle of fucking metaphor right now. Plus, I still haven't finished Silent Hill, which, (laughs) complete uh, transparency here, I am the least far in Silent Hill out of all the new games that I'm playing right now. I'm not surprised. Yeah, so take that. Take that. Not surprised. Yeah, I'm glad to wait for that. Dude, to be completely honest, it's like, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to shit on the original, but I almost feel well, like that was a, a type of game design that's kind of worn out its welcome. Like, at least in Resident yeah. Evil 2 and 4, dude, you're in different locations and busting shit down constantly as you're going from the village to the caves to the castle, and then you're on a boat and shit. You know, even in uh, RE2. You're in the police station, the sewers, the labs. I've played hours of the Silent Hill 2 remake, and so far, the large majority of what I have done is wander around in hallways, seeing how many doors are locked. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. like, it's still every bit as creepy and, and, you know, and atmospheric as it once was, but, like, I gotta be honest, I'm not finding the gameplay super compelling this time around. I'm just not. Yeah, well, that was my big concern about it, is that the game, so much of it, if you're not playing with a fact or know the game, is just bumping into nonsense and getting lost. And that was, at the time, really exciting, interesting, and different, and it was creepy and weird. And But now, modern quality of life, it's like, you got to give me a Dead Space-style thing to show me where the next objective is. Yeah. I'm just not scared, and I don't have the time to sink in like that to, like, you know, you're not going to keep me on the edge to of my seat for eight hours. around looking at shit getting, getting rusty. Dark. <laughs> yeah, with yeah, all the doors like locked. Rusty. There's, I mean, I assume they haven't increased uh, drastically the amount of combat encounters because Resident Evil Although, is so combat. This is Silent this Hill is something not. that I mentioned in my preview of it. I don't know if you watched that video, but something that pleasantly yeah. surprised me about it was um, your the handgun is actually pretty powerful. Like one, you have to your melee weapon does not do enough damage so that you can ignore melee combat mechanics. It doesn't kill them so fast that you don't have to dodge. You have to dodge. Even if you're just mashing the X button, and which I thought was good. Two, once, you know, I mean, I'm sure you remember the original Sound Hills. The handgun is barely better than the melee weapon. You're still dumping bullet after bullet into these fucking things. In the remake, two well-placed shots put down almost anything, which I did think was pretty cool. But on the other side, like, the first major thing that, place that you get into after wandering around the town is an apartment building. And then after that, where do you go? Into a hospital that, for all intents and purposes, looks exactly the same. Looks exactly the same, yeah. 
which I mean, I'm not you know, they add the them. nurses and like some of the areas look a little different or whatever, but like it's still hallways with locked doors. And I'm sorry, but like I it's just it's it it is as well done as I think it possibly could be. It's just I think if you're not being blown away by the at the time what was novel psychological survival horror the game overall just comes off as kind of boring that's, yeah that's my that's, concern. That's, i'll that's play it with so an far. faq when it's when it's free on ps plus because uh, you know it was interesting then but even the last times i played it i had so much more fun with it when i was playing it with an faq so i could just enjoy the game and rather than being like all right cool i'm like stuck in another hallway and i don't know which weird hole i have to put my hand in to proceed <laughs> Yeah, and actually, which is great and interesting, but it's great and interesting if the, it's the first time you've played it and it's on PS2, yeah. where yeah. the only way for, from all intents and purposes, the most efficient way you're going to get through it is by crowding as many of your friends as you can into the room and all trying to figure it out. You know, when that's not the case anymore, it's like, dude, I don't have the, I don't have the patience for this anymore. I don't know if it's that I'm older yeah. or I just expect things to treat me better than being like lulls wander around in a hallway maze for hours haha ha. you know really I, I don't know myself. i want to see how i think i i question if the perspective change has an effect on that as well because the the distance that you get from the pseudo fixed camera i feel like it gives this other weird psychological aspect to the game you know i think a really good example of this that i saw brought up was one of the early scenes when you're first running along the lakeside trail and it cuts to behind the trees like a horror movie and it's really voyeuristic. Mm. It gives a really interesting change. Did they did they maintain that for the remake? When you're running to the not very first save point. Not really. But I mean, if you recall in the original Silent Hill 2, it was it was not 2D, or I mean, it wasn't um, pre-rendered backgrounds, but you also didn't have complete control of the camera either. Right. It would change camera angles sometimes yeah, right sometimes yeah yeah but right, i think yeah. you made you brought up a really good point if they just had that dead space mechanic where you hit a button and it shows the path to where like where you're supposed to go if they just implemented that i probably would have beaten it by now right but it also that if they did that that people would go crazy and say this completely undermined silent yeah, which, Hill, which, uh, which i think they're probably right it would <laughs> and they are right it's it's a yeah. it's a no-win situation it's a motherfucking kobayashi Maru. <laughs> yeah, that's a right. James Sunderland mess. So yeah, Ooh. I'm interested to try that. Oh, gee, but yeah, I, yeah. I want to back up. Oh wait, we we're talking about again. Switch too. I'm sorry. Uh, let me get back to my point. I know massive segue, but don't worry, I held the thread the whole time. Oh, you did. So, Impressive. Okay. The important thing here is that the Nintendo does not have any serious releases. We the reason we got on this tangent is because yes, there's a lot of great games coming out. It's the land of milk and honey as far as games are coming out. I am my cuppeth runneth over. With so many games, we can get to what I'm playing. I have so much to talk about. I've, I'm playing so many awesome games, y'all. You don't even can't even believe games over the last 30 years worth of games. So sick. But the point is that Nintendo themselves, Mario and Luigi Brothership, which is, I mean, I have to assume these games do really well. They're great games. I, I you know, I played people a few apparently of them on, are on, fucking yeah. like from the what's been leaked of it and the reviews. People are flipping. It's not my kind of game personally, but from what I've seen, people are losing their shit over it. Yeah, I mean, I really, I love them because it's like the kind of an evolution of Mario RPG. Um, I've loved some of them, but, but it's just, it's not a crazy mainline game. It could do a million copies, but what the fuck does Breath of the Wild, what, what did Tears of the Kingdom do? A couple, let's let's find out. Let's see, Tears of the Kingdom has sold over 20 million copies to date. So it's yeah, each oh did God. one and That in and one of itself, recall, of Tears of the Kingdom was just Breath of the Wild DLC. Yeah, like it was I mean, good I'll, DLC I'll take, before everybody well. tears our fucking head off. It was good DLC, but it really was just DLC. I never even beat it. I played like the first ten hours of it, and I was like, I'm bored as fuck, jumping around these stupid sky islands, and knowing that there's almost nothing more to see other than like the underground Hyrule, which I thought fucking sucked to begin with. But that's just me. Breath of the Wild Drop the hate has in the comments. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, let him have it. <laughs> Breath of the Wild, I mean, you let me have it. I didn't even play Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, you so. didn't even fucking play it. I mean, yeah, I didn't, it, didn't, it, did, it, did not, it did not convince me to engage with it. Um, 
Breath of the Wild did over 30 million. My point is between those two games, it's 50 million. Peach did 1 million, probably very successful. Mario and Luigi, what's it going to be? Compared to how much it cost from an outsourced studio, yeah, it's probably What is Donkey good. Kong Country Returns going to make for 60 bucks? How much is that going to make? My point is Nintendo does not have mainline software lined up. There's nothing. And the only reason I think that could be is because they're saving it to be like, yo, guess what? Are you ready for the Switch 2 lineup? This is all coming for Switch Simultaneous 2 Simultaneous releases. On yes, one which would Switch not be as... Which, which they have set precedent for, because am I correct that, first of all, Twilight Princess came out both on GameCube and Wii at the same time? I believe. Yes, it did. Am I crazy, or did Breath of the Wild also come out for Wii U? Dude, not only are you correct, but because I had a, uh, a rooted Wii U, I played and beat it on Wii U. Whoa. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Dude, I didn't oh, buy a dude, be, screen experience. Because I could do that, that's why I didn't buy a, a Switch until Odyssey came out. Because if you recall, Breath of the Wild was a simultaneous launch on Wii U and Switch, and Odyssey did not come out until that fall. So I played Wii U on a, or I played uh, Breath of the Wild on a hacked Wii U and did not buy a uh, a Switch until Mario Odyssey came out later that year. So, yes, you are right. It was uh, also yeah. a simultaneous Wii U and Switch release. That's really interesting. I've never never seen what the second screen experience looks like for that. I bet that would be pretty cool. I don't think it's – I don't recall I'm it. sure it had a map and inventory. Yeah, or some dumb shit. It's I don't always know. A I map. played it with the Pro it's Controller a projector. I don't know what the fuck it was doing. Oh, not with not with the, the little – No, not with like, that stupid hand little board. fucking – the, the semi tablet, like the Fisher the Price Wii plastic tablet. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, they they use the Wii Fit pads and just drop screens in them, and we're like, here you go. Here's, here's our new system. It's like, great. Garbage. So again, they have. There's precedent here. I don't know if they announce them as simultaneous releases, but I can absolutely see the same kind of thing happening where they have a serious mainline game coming out. Um, it will not be Zelda because I feel like there's been so much. I feel like Zelda has gone from. There's a lot. There's a lot of Zelda's coming out. Uh, not as much Mario coming out. Pokemon. When's the next Pokemon coming? Out? I know they're announced, right? There's, there's a, a whole Pokemon. bunch Isn't of leaks Diamond about the new Pokemon um, games recently. I think it's but Diamond and Pearl. I, I don't care about Pokemon. I didn't look into any of them at all. I really don't. Well, I. I mean, I love Pokemon. I may not be playing it, but I, what I care about is Nintendo's strategy. And I think the really the big indicator as to Switch 2's release is the lack of software on Nintendo's calendar. And Nintendo is always teasing shit like a year out unless they do something crazy, like a, a Metroid Prime uh, remaster shadow drop, which also, now that I mention it, adds more credence to my to my point here because they very Wait, well and, could on, have- refresher, what is your point again? <laughs> Metro, all right, so Metroid Prime remaster was something that people wanted for a long time, were hoping to get, but we did not find out about it until Nintendo announced it at a direct and said it's coming out like today. I'm pretty sure they released it as oh, the it, direct was happening. Right. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I think you're announced right. it and released it simultaneously. This and it was fucking phenomenal. I played it. I finished it. It was actually my first time ever playing through Metroid Prime. Loved it. Highly recommended to everybody. Get that game. Fantastic. But so Nintendo now has a history. So we're, we're talking. Here's three things that are in favor. Number one, there are no real major software releases first party on Nintendo's calendar. Mario and Luigi Bro. And there, there are zero past two and a half months from now. There's and there's two in the horizon, and I wouldn't consider either of them to be things that are like I don't think Donkey Kong Country Returns is not moving systems. Mario and Luigi Brothership is not moving systems because they don't need to move systems. They're moving systems with their fucking those amazing bundles that are coming out. This you year, could also uh, say that they have, considering the Switch's status in terms of what is it like the third best selling console of all time? Like they don't need to move systems anymore. Like I'm no, pretty it's, sure it's, that they it's, it's already the moved that. way more than they ever thought that they would. But here's something interesting I just found. A lot – this is um, what is giving – what basically this is the reason people are saying that it's going to be – it almost has to be this week. Nintendo has an earnings report on November 5th. So that's – so people are saying it's going to have to be this uh, this week. I mean, that's it's possible, but the earnings report would be addressing whatever has happened in the previous quarter. So, yeah, meaning that they want, meaning that they want to get, they want to go into the next quarter without the, the influence of a new system announced in it. I'm sure the financial, the financial quarter is over, um, because they wouldn't do an earnings call like immediately. Maybe. Um, let me find I don't know, out. It says it has Nintendo's November 5th earnings report. 
So yeah, it, but it, earnings report does not mean that the, the financial quarter is still going on. It could have already ended. The report's that's just true. Not I out. actually don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to look up shit about year. this. Um, because yeah, the Japanese fiscal year. Okay, so Q3 for Japan runs July to September, so it's already closed. And then it's it's the same. It's the this is the Japanese fiscal year runs April 1st to March 31st. Um. All right, let me see. Hold on. I'm trying to get more information on this because this is important. Well, it doesn't say what the quarters are. Oh, we can, I guess we can assume that it's March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So, mm, March, April, May, June, July. I mean, who knows? I don't know what they're reporting on. So, Nintendo um, earnings call. November 5th. Let's find out what that is. I think it's important. So, oh, it's their six month earnings release. So, that would be, that's correct. That would be for the first two courses. So, it has nothing to do with this. So, the only, the only reason that they would so have. So, you're saying they're would, unrelated. People are just clawing onto that fucking date. It's, it, well, it's, it's, it's not unrelated necessarily because they, they, in earnings calls, are times where they will say things like, um, you know, we, we are expecting tailwinds from sales of the new system coming. Right. We're already doing great, and here's what's coming down the pipeline. But they would have made – you're right that they would make the announcement before, but that's not it, – it's not – I would not say that it's a given because they're talking about finances that happened the, you know, the quarter closed at the end of September. So we're now into Q4 now, and they're talking about everything that happened March through September. So they've already got more than enough to celebrate because they've been – Moving. I mean, I don't know. When did Tears of the Kingdom come? Oh, that was last year. Tears of the Kingdom was I don't know last how, year, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how Nintendo's been doing this year, but I imagine they've been moving since. But I just, I don't, I don't see the correlation other than the fact that they could jump on a sales call and say, tailwinds. But I still, I, my three points, I want to, I want to finish these out. The first one is the fact that they don't have a lot on their schedule. The second one is that they've been known to release uh, flagship titles simultaneously with the current generation and the new system. Right. And they have also uh, have a proven track record of shadow dropping huge first party or let's call it second party releases like Metroid Prime Remaster. Those are three indicators that this shit could come out anytime and they could be like, hey, new Mario game coming. Boom, it's going to be dropping at the same time as this. It's not out of the question. They could have been secretly developing that under a different name. Um, now, the question, but of course, the question is not, is it coming? It's when. And that's right. the real debate. Um, Here's an additional point. This, um, let's see, uh, some Brazilian games journalist who's been behind a lot of uh, Nintendo rumors recently that have been proven true. This is why he states that November 5th and the earnings report is, could be important is because investors will be expected to ask questions about the Switch successor during that call. Yeah, that's absolutely. But it doesn't mean they have to say anything. They absolutely could say there will be more information coming about that soon. Sure, but like, yes, absolutely. But Especially I just if feel like Nintendo, ha how many times has Nintendo said there'll be more information about that soon? Like at some point, they have to say something. I, I agree with all this. I'm giving just counterpoint, even though I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Here's the other counterpoint. These shareholders understand that their whimsy <laughs> and <laughs> desire to understand, like, like, tell me when Switch 2 is coming out. They get that that is not necessarily that fucking with Nintendo's intentional marketing strategy is not in their best interest. So if Nintendo says information about that is forthcoming, unless the Nintendo has given them reason to be concerned, like bad earnings or something, they have no reason to have to go, oh, but wait, wait, stick around because we got tailwinds coming from this thing. They could very well say like, yes, we are planning to, as we have stated, we are planning to announce this console by the end of the fiscal year, March 31st, 2025, as we've stated before. And they'll just be like, cool, thank you. They're not going to be like, well, you need to tell us more. And then Nintendo's going to be like, well, here's a pile of money off our Switch sales. By the way, what you <laughs> yeah, care about is that we're selling up. these consoles this year. We're making a ton of money. They're like, oh, yeah. What, you want us to reveal this right now and cannibalize the sales of this? They're going to talk about their bundles that they're selling if they're going to talk about Tailwinds. If anything, they'll say, we are selling these bundles, and every one of these is pure profit. It's going to continue to move sales of one of the best-selling games of all time, Mario Kart 8. And continue to move switch sales which you are correct is the third best selling console of all time after ps2 and then ds yes switch is what's three. crazy is the ds hit number one remember when that shit first came out it was a fucking pile dude 
We were yeah, all buying love- copies of like Feel the Magic and like yeah. fucking Mario 64 DS, which didn't. Do you remember? You, Mario 64 DS did not let you play as motherfucking Mario. It made you play as Yoshi. You had to do a bunch of special shit to unlock Mario. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. my god. So you couldn't remember. even play as to, fucking Mario. I didn't play it because you had to use the pad to the camera. Oh god, that was so awful maneuver. too. I, I just couldn't I couldn't it's deal just, with the way. It's crazy that that, that shit ended up being the best song console of all time because it was pice when it first dropped. Yeah, it really came around once like Dawn of Sorrow came out. Once once companies started making normal games for it, yeah. that's when it started to really shine. Although Dawn of Sorrow, uh, I will never excuse you for making me draw like a sigil after oh, beating a boss. System. And like for if you didn't do it right, you would have to keep yeah. fighting the fucking boss. Uh yeah. Oh the seals. The seals. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's God. weird. Which are now quick time events in the Dominus collection, which I yeah. still want to know how that works. Great. When you Thanks. Pay it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm I'm totally gonna a hundred percent I'm I'm buying it. It's on sale right now on PS store for twenty bucks. I'm probably just gonna I grab mean, it. I, I, I downloaded it for Switch. I just, dude, I just don't I have no interest. I switch God I don't want to buy crappy ass Joy Cons. I'd rather I I'd, I'd rather spend the twenty bucks on the Dominus collection than the <laughs> seventy on my Switch Joy Cons, even though I have a jailbroken you, one. I've long been a Switch hater, kinda. Low a key. what? You've been a low a key switch hater, hater kind of. Dude, since I got a PS5, really, because once I got a PS5, I was like, why do I? What do I? What use do I have for this incredibly underpowered thing? Other than that, it's portable, which is great. But now that I have the RG thirty five XX, while the sc- the Switch's screen is hotter, it's like this thing is way more expensive. So it, so if it gets stolen, it's a much bigger deal. I lose the RG thirty five XX. I'm pissed as fuck that I lost all my games, but I can replace the entire thing for under a hundred, and have all those games loaded back up and the entire thing up and running in like an hour. Right. But if if I lose if I lost a switch, the entire process of of getting one of the OG ones and then jailbreaking it again, oh god, forget it. What it's really a nightmare! Not that big a deal. So, you buy one of those and, little jig kits and you just slide that little thing yeah, in there. Yeah, and it's and it sucks. And also to say nothing of the fact that I did I repaired my Joy-Con twice and it broke. Uh, it still ended up finally <laughs> breaking. I had to buy own. another set of Joy Cons too. Yeah, that's 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 awful. Um. It and is, I did. True. I did successfully fix the drift. I successfully fixed the drift. That's how I was able to play through Dark Souls. Right. But well, enough. But of, let's. This has been about a half an hour of Nintendo talk at this point. So I mean, I think it's the. This is the important topic: is when is Switch Two going to be announced? I mean, this, it, can, this it, it is says the week of October twenty eighth. He says it's going to be this week. I don't know. Like, I mean, like he broke the story of Switch Two being delayed to twenty twenty five. I don't. I don't think it's called breaking a story. That's like <laughs> Nostradamus being like red birds will fly out of the east and destroy Paris in a night or whatever the fuck. <laughs> you know, it's like you know. I don't think like, Nostradamus said that just for the record, but I, you know, I think I think Coyle said that. <laughs> yeah, Coyle said that. <laughs> Fucking Peter um, Christopherson or whoever said that. Peter Sleazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, well, look, I it could be this week. It could. I mean, it, it, basically, I mean, my, it, I have no idea when the fuck it's going to be, but I just feel like we're about to hit November. Like, you have to say something at some point. Yeah. Even the original the, Switch, dude, was announced, I think, in the first week of October. Like, we're even, that's, we're that's way the past that. the announced um, timeline for the original Switch. So it's like, are you going to... Wait till after the holidays to announce it? That seems silly. No, Uh, I think that they have to take advantage, I think, of people's financial planning post-holidays. Nobody is going to save money and be like, oh, you're not getting anything for Christmas because you're getting a Switch 2 in January. But they can say, oh, you got a little extra cash from Grandma? Save that for March or April. Or they could buy, if they know that it's going to be backwards compatible, Prior to the holiday shopping, people or like parents could buy their kids Switch games, right? Yeah, no, and buy feel them, comfortable about games. it, knowing that when their kids start shrieking and asking for the next Nintendo system, all those games that they spent Christmas money on won't all of a sudden be useless. That's absolutely true. Like Inclu- that's an, um, that's got to be another thing that they're thinking about, right? Absolutely. They they enable crossplay for things like Mario Kart six or Mario Kart eight, so that it's like if you have a Switch two and a Switch, and you have Mario Kart eight, you buy your system at the end of this year. Your friend gets a Switch two in March. You guys can still play Mario Kart eight together. It's genius. Yeah, it exactly. would be insane to me if it's there's not backwards compatibility and crossplay. 
would be no, insane. There, there must be. It's Nintendo. It's Nintendo. You know, well, that, I mean, that's, the, I know. that's the only reason it's not a, a, a given that we don't even have to think about is because it's right. Nintendo and they sometimes seem like they go out of their way to do the most awkward, non-intuitive thing possible. It's horrifying. <laughs> it is horrifying. It's horrifying. Would... Our friend codes are still a thing, and it's almost 2025. It's like, good offensive. God in heaven. It's offensive. It All was right. offensive when it came out for DS. <laughs> and it's offensive now. now. DS the first thing that had it? DS with friend codes. Yeah, because DS was the first thing when yeah. Nintendo launched their online service. Well, God, I wish I could remember what game was the first one that had online. Maybe was it was it a Picto Mario Chat, game. was it? No, no, no. Picto Chat was Wi-Fi only. Oh, that's true. It was true. way it was. deep. It was way deep into the DS life cycle, remember? We Maybe had it, was Mar- it was probably a Mario yes, Kart game. I I said I said I thought it might be Mario Kart DS. Wait, no, 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 no. Wasn't I think No, 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 dude. No. Was it Mario Texas? 64 had a multiplayer component. It was it four did, but player. It was Wi-Fi only. It did, but it was Wi-Fi only. I'm was talking it? about the online. Yeah, Wi-Fi only cuz online came much much later after all of the demask stuff. It was the Nintendo online service that launched later and it had a little like red symbol that would be on the packaging. For oh, these games. Right, you're right. I remember um, the way I'm the Mario up. Kart box looked. Ma- Mario Kart DS. Oh, sorry. It was uh, my bad. It was a little blue symbol, but it has. Okay, shit. Where is it? Um, oh, it was Nintendo Wi Fi Connect. That's what it was called. Oh, God, Tice. Nintendo <laughs> Wi Fi Connect. God, get that's, the fuck out of here, you idiots. God, is that, damn it. God, why am I in Google Shopping? Get out of here. Nintendo Wi Fi Connect. Let's. Uh. Oh, Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection was... Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection has a Wikipedia article, <laughs> sometimes shortened to Nintendo WFC, <laughs> was the online multiplayer service that provided uh, online for DS and Wii games from November 14th, 2005 to May 20th, 2014. So it... Uh, yeah, that was... That was it. I would oh, I wanted to see what was with the first... Oh, yep, Mario Kart DS was the first game with it. Yep, oh, and so it was right. it was developed under the direct supervision of Satoru Iwata. Hell, oh, fuck yeah. Oh, rest also, in peace, brosie. Yeah, but... Chris, rest in that's... peace to a G. Yeah, it, Rest yeah, in peace friend, to a real one. Maybe friend codes can with me. Anyway, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Nintendo, we'll see what happens. Um, they, they really... All they all have right. to do is... What? I was just gonna... I'm gonna lock you into a, a prediction. I'm gonna force a prediction from you. Of what when it will be give me a week give me announced. what week do you think that they're gonna unveil it week in a month first week first week december 2024 first week december 2024 yeah after after black friday shopping i say it's, it's gonna be this black week. friday cyber Monday. i say i'm gonna take a full huge hit of both the hopium and the copium i'm gonna <laughs> od on both and i'm gonna say it's this week so well, look, soon in fact that it right. might even be revealed before i upload this video yeah, <laughs> that would be incredible. In which case, I would look even more retarded. So you got to upload an addendum to this. Video. An addendum. It, All right. Yeah, so that's an appropriate cap on the Nintendo discussion. I know you have a new game that you've been playing that you were dying to talk about. So why don't you get into it? Oh yeah, Diablo. Why don't you get 4, deep Vessel inside it? Diablo Four Vessel of Hatred. Man, I I played Diablo Four when it came out. I I played a character to end game a necromancer to fifty. I only got like a few Paragon levels in. I remember I played so much Diablo three, so much, so much, like way more than I did. So much across <laughs> uh, multiple PC and Xbox, and then crazy <laughs> amounts on Switch handheld mode. Um, Diablo four, when I played it, it just felt like more of the same, and I wasn't loving it as much as I like. It, the end game was not where I loved. I love the Diablo three end game, which is just you know rapid fire hitting dungeons and just getting loot and right. killing stuff fast. Uh, D four at the time didn't have that but they've clearly made a lot of changes because diablo uh, vessel of hatred the new expansion is phenomenal the spirit born class is so awesome it's super op right now in such a fun way it's sort of like uh it's basically like a monk class um but it feels like you're casting and doing physical combat and you've got like animal spirits and and stuff like that it's super super cool really fast paced and i'm wrecking stuff very cool. I mean, I sunk easily like 30 hours into this character. I feel like, like you've been playing it all week. Oh, it was crazy. I played so much of it last weekend. I think I played it like 10 hours in one day. It was ridiculous. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like Paragon level 100 right now. Jesus Absolutely Christ. loving it. The season is fantastic, and I really love playing this character while it's OP. All the end game stuff. The end game stuff is so good and so varied that I'm like, what do I even do? And like, where do I go? My one complaint is that it's 
been tweaked to be so easy that like in the first maybe 10 hours of end game i already had two of my best in slot items which are usually something i feel like you've got to grind for a long long time to do but on the flip side i like flying through it and i don't mind the idea of maybe being able to go and have another character that uh is on the same realm or whatever and i can work through that grind that one up so um I, it did i did sort of bounce off a little bit and had way less of a, a crazy craving to play it once i was like oh I've like I got these I've got all but one of the, the items I absolutely desperately want and then I'm just kind of tweaking gear up little by little. I've got way more paragon levels to earn though, obviously. There's the thing is there's only three hundred in total in four where you could go infinite paragon levels in three, which is kind of weird. Um but it'll Wait, I'm sure it'll take Parag uh you can only get up to paragon level three hundred in Diablo four. And in Diablo three okay. there were infinite paragon levels. Right. Oh that's interesting. I didn't know that they capped it in Diablo four. Yeah, and I forget also how the Paragon levels are shared among characters in the realm. Do you think but anyway, that's a better? Just, do you think that's better game design? I don't. I don't know. But I like the idea of being able to play infinitely, and that's my that's my issue. Is that Diablo three? I felt like I could play infinitely at the end right. game, and already in four, I'm like, am I like done? Am I? Did I get Would to the you, end? Like, I feel you're so seeing too many diminishing returns already. Sort of, yeah, sort of, yeah. There's so yeah. much to do, so much to do, but my character already feels kind of built. So, so much like, to well, do in not... what way? Like, name, like, list off. What are you doing? Like, you log into D four are... with your max level Paragon whatever character. What do you do? It's fantastic. You open up the map, and it will tell you immediately what world events are going to happen. And there's world right. events usually happening like up to three every thirty minutes. You get things like realm walkers which are are smaller boss events you can get big world bosses where and l much like an mmo other players will show up and everyone will just attack this thing at once everyone gets their own xp super mm -hmm. cool so everyone kind of you don't see people running around usually but they'll, everyone will collide really quick and everyone means like you know four or five people it must be instanced in some way um and just running up kill a boss move on uh, or these special world events like Helltide, which means an area of the map will have stronger enemies, more events that are happening, give special currency items, and those currency items can then be traded for caches of equipment, gems, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot more room to play here. For example, none of my gear is socketed right now because gems are so insanely expensive uh, in 4. So is I'm that just where rather most than getting. Is the gold sink is? Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. Um, I would say the gold sink is in tempering and uh, masterwork on weapons and items, which is when you you change, uh, you add affixes with tempering. So, like, I can add an affix that up uh, to a weapon. Eagle finesse makes it so any of my eagle abilities as a spirit born uh, have <laughs> more damage. Finesse. Yeah, eagle finesse. That's a, there's also nature's finesse. So. Oh which is awesome. So yeah, you add, you add these as affixes and a masterwork is, is crazy for crazy amounts of gold. You can then uh, improve those affixes by like 5% or something every time you, you upgrade. So like the first one, add 5% to your affixes for like 400 K then add 5% for like a million and then add 5% for like 2 million. So sooner rather than later, it's like, all right, you're out of gold or out of resources to do this right so those are those are reasons to keep grinding and keep going those are the gold things there's a there's a so the, on the you look in the map and there's just it's like you're looking at a far cry map of shit to do there's so much oh, to do it's that, so easy to that zip gives around. me anxiety you could just run around and discover stuff yeah there's there's a lot to do well that's part of the reason why i focus on there's there's a lot of focused dungeon play you can mm. go to these dungeons and just continue to run instance dungeons for like two three minutes some of them oh man there's this type of dungeon called i think it's the pit uh maybe not it might be the no sorry it's <laughs> the new not. dungeon i forgot that it's the new dungeon that's from vessel of hatred where you uh, give it an offering that's like a modifier for the dungeon and then so like um you know this this can you can do this for all dungeons uh you'll get five plus five percent xp but all enemies are electrified something like that and when you run through this dungeon it will be you'll have a timer of three minutes and certain oh, enemies God, will like show a up mythic on the map. plus dungeon no sort of certain <laughs> certain enemies will show up on the map with a little timer icon next to them you kill them you get bonus time like an arcade game and then right. you have to you have to like do you basically like click on beacons and light them and then kill the enemies that show up to collect flames and that will increase a progress bar that will increase your progress in this dungeon so you got to continue to kill the enemies get more time like an arcade game and complete the dungeon to get more rewards so that's stuff like that I absolutely love. And if I want, I could run around. There's like there's so many side quests. There's so much to do. It's super cool. My only issue is that I feel so like in D3, I felt like I was always like eking out more and more upgrades. Whereas immediately, just from gambling 
a few times, like 10 times, I was able to get my best in slot weapon from just get the normal gambling. Is that frenzy. a normal like, oh, experience? I, I mean, it must be because I got my best in slot helmet by doing the same thing. Oh, I rolled okay. it like so 10 you times. So you repeated it already? I did. And there's another Ooh. level of weapon uh, or another level of item up that's called Mythic Unique. And there's only like 12 of those in the entire game. Those, and I'm looking for a ring of one of those. That Those are like complete build changing items. They're crazy. Um, that's another story. So there's, again, there's a lot to do. And also with how many classes there are, I would be more than happy to run just the Vessel of Hatred campaign again with the other classes because it's super, super cool. So I love it. I've certainly have gotten my 40 bucks worth yeah, out of it. That was a pretty good it. treaties on it right there. Jesus Christ. I really enjoy it. I think it's great. I definitely think anybody should try it who likes Diablo in any way. I still, I like the colors and the colorfulness of D3 a lot, but Diablo 4 is kind of the definitive Diablo experience, I think. It has all the quality of life stuff you want from a modern game. Great. Yeah, that, that's what I heard was that, I think it was PC Gamer or one or two other outlets the the rare few that I actually, you know, put any stock in what they're saying. Um, that they said the Vessel of Hatred pretty much transformed Diablo 4 from a mid-action uh, or ARPG into, like, one of the best that's out right now. Would that would yeah, you it, concur with that? That's how it feels. I, there's got to be a reason why I bounced off of it after I had gotten to, into the I mean, I got a level 50 before. also. I didn't even finish the story mode, but once I hit level 50, I was like, eh, I've seen everything that there is to see. I'm done. Right. Yeah, I, I just I was not feeling it the same way, whereas now there's so much endgame stuff to do, which is great. How, how was like the campaign? campaign because I would, if really I bought fun. it, I would only buy it just to play the campaign because I don't care about I seasonal characters. Cool. I don't care about endless grinding once you're max level. I just want to see the new areas, see the new bosses, and then I'm done. Like, how how long do you think it would entertain me for? Um, the campaign, eight, ten hours. I mean, that's it's, shit. <laughs> what's, it, what's it, like 40 bucks, right? Eight to yeah, ten hours is not even that bad. Time. Space Marines campaign was barely eight hours, and that was 70 bucks, and we fucking love that, so. I, I think it's I think it's worth every penny, and also the 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 story is really cool. It's an a, rare the w, a rare Blizzard W, a rare Blizzard W. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, which is yeah, I was astonished while I was playing it, just getting so sucked in. Like wow, Blizz, you still got it when you really want it. You still know how to make a game that just sucks me in. Where I was waking up in the middle of the night when I couldn't fall back to sleep, I was like, well, I'll just grind out an hour of Diablo here, <sighs> just to like. Blow I mean, myself that's a good sleep. like that's a good fucking game. You can't deny, it. and that's what I think pisses me off so much about modern Blizzard. It's like just when I'm ready to completely write them off and be like, all right, I now no longer need to count Blizzard among the devs and companies that I pay attention to, right? Like I can just completely disregard them. Just when I'm about to do that horrible WoW expansion, um, like Overwatch, I don't give a fuck about Overwatch. Just when I'm about ready to write them off completely, boom, WoW Classic drops. Fuck. Yep. Now I have to fucking pay a little attention to him again. And then just as I'm starting to get tired of that, boom, they drop another version of WoW Classic. Then they drop Hardcore WoW Classic. Then they put out Diablo, uh, fucking Diablo 4. And then after that, I'm when I finish Diablo 4, I'm ready to completely write him off again. Now they put out Vessel of Hatred, which apparently is really fucking awesome. And they just, they just won't let me completely forget about them. And it's... I don't know. It's equal parts inspiring, but also infuriating. Cause it's like, this is not, it's when they act. I feel like it's almost accidental. Like when they accidentally do something good, like vessel of hatred, it's not because all of a sudden they changed their philosophy or like, Oh, you know what? I think now after, you know, now after putting out a bunch of stuff that was just kind of predatory and exploitative to our consumers, now we're going to do something good. No, 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 no. They just happened to hit upon a formula that was both fun, equal parts fun and exploitative, right? So it's not yep. like you can invest in this and then have some sort of renewed hope that Blizzard is back. No, they're not back. You just got lucky this time. But they get lucky frequently enough still that I can't just fucking write them off. Yeah, no, uh, it's exactly true. I can't stand them. They're predatory and evil. And they're they're so predatory and evil that I was like, 
oh man, I really, really want that cheetah cub running around. <laughs> oh my god, for me. no! And they intentionally you get because now they have pets that run alongside you and pick shit up. They're little oh, familiars. Oh Jesus They'll Christ! Auto grab shit for you, yeah. and of course the one they give you is a dog that looks like a it's blender a asset by a child. <laughs> it's, a dog. it's garbage. Yeah. It's were they ridiculous. eating the dogs? <laughs> yeah, they they absolutely were. They were they were shaming me with they show you the dog model and it just seriously it just it looks horrifying. It's just so bad. It looks like how somebody would describe a dog who's never seen one for real, but just had heard tell of a dog is what it looks like. And then there's the cat that's like so beautifully animated and looks like a jaguar cub. And you could get oh, that cat. Oh, it would have gotten buy, me. I love kitties, dude. It probably if you gotten buy me. the you gotta buy the vessel of hatred deluxe set which also if for mount which is like 90 you, bucks too right yeah yeah it for, with a mount you uh you obviously have your horse mount but vessel of hatred now there's jaguar mounts and the oh uh, good god next the, is the gonna be a ghostly set. skeletal jaguar mount then there's I, I, gonna look, be a fucking I'll, baron I'll rivendare's it. fucking skeletal mountain fucking. i immediately as soon as i was able to buy with gold uh a black jaguar mount i got one immediately oh god i mean it's so much cooler to have than the horse but you can't get the other one without paying for it so i'm like blizz you are monstrous and evil at least let me pay like 20 million oh, gold to get it oh my god speaking of blizzard mounts and monstrous evil did you see the new mount that they just added to wow yeah, uh, what the one that everyone's freaking out about the the dinosaur that uh correct me if i'm wrong it's a dinosaur, and it's a good mount, but the reason people are freaking out about it is because it's upending the economy because people are using WoW tokens to pay for it since it costs $90. Dude, is that it's accurate? 90 fucking dollars. And why is that? What is special about it? It's a dinosaur. It's like a Brachiosaurus, a Patasaurus-looking thing, a long-necked theropod. It's a, yeah, which in old lingo would be called a long boy. <laughs> a long boy. The Brutosaur yeah. long boy. Here's a the link. Endless Here's thing. a link. Check Discord. Oh, I heard a little beep, and I was like, this must be somebody trying to sell me ED pills. And it was. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> New Brutosaur mount on in-game shop offers auctions and mail, which is something that yeah. mounts have been doing for since the fucking... Uh, since I don't know Rath. about Auction House. Auction House might be uh, relegated to the only the original Longboy. But like, I remember. So just for being, those of you, those rare few of you that still actually play World of Warcraft, I did. This is just in case anybody was curious. This is the first WoW expansion in twenty years. The first WoW expansion ever that I did not buy. The first one I did not buy, and I still have not played it. I've been playing Classic, and I've been playing on the private ser server uh, Turtle WoW. I did not buy it, and this like this is why. If any of you are still wondering why Blizzard keeps WoW going and why the quality of the content keeps fucking nosediving, but it still keeps on going anyway, look no further than the reigns of the Traitor's Gilded Brutosaur. This abomination will cost you $90, dude. 90 fucking dollars. Like... You could buy two copies of the new expansion for the price of this fucking thing. So, like, if you're wondering, if you're wondering why they're able to make the content so bad, this is why. Because if they have people, like, that's what's even more disturbing. This motherfucker is selling out. It's selling so much, it's upending the economy. It's not like it's right. just a couple whales that are buying it. Everyone is buying it. So just do a little insane. do a little thought experiment. How many of your original subscriber base that's funding you by paying $15 a month? How many of them can you sacrifice on the altar of a $90 microtransaction? Like that's worth yep. like 6 months of a regular user's subscription. So if you ask what's more valuable, pleasing the regular subscribers or selling shit like this that's your fucking answer like it's just yeah. absolutely it's nauseating especially no, insane that's why i don't want to support them it's yeah but then they put up vessel of hatred and <laughs> and 
All right, but best believe I will not. I will not be buying any of the stuff with real world money. That's not going to happen. The fact that they even got forty only because not. it cost forty bucks did I even Dude, play it. If you were earning minimum wage, you would have to work twelve hours to afford the reins of the traders' gilded brutazor. Twelve hours, dude. Like, God fucking damn it. God damn it. You yeah, just you I, hate I, to see it, dude. You hate to see it. It would be different, maybe, if WoW was a free to play game. I've been playing Throne and Liberty recently, which is another NC Soft Korean uh MMO. I think ported over by Amazon or some some nightmare corpo like that, I'm not sure. But and that game is really pretty fucking good. It's completely free to play. WoW still charges you $15 a month. And on top of that, they want almost $100 for a collection of pixels that lets you use the in-game auction house. Yeah. And they, and they have the nerve to label this as a celebration of the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft. Celebration. Let's celebrate by giving us money. <laughs> yeah, celebrate by giving us even more money celebrate by paying us more that's ridiculous hey They're we heard criminal. that you like paying us so we put some opportunity to pay us in yeah. the last thing that you paid us for to celebrate okay. all the time that you've spent paying celebrate us. all the times <laughs> that you've paid us already celebrate all this 20 years oh, i mean jesus that's celebrate how, 20 it, years of paying us by paying us to use more stuff in the thing that you're paying us to play like holy if, fuck dude like if no shame have, if you've had a WoW subscription at fifteen dollars a month for twenty years, stop! You would don't have don't even don't even say it. three thousand six hundred dollars. That's how much money be, I've given Blizzard. That's twenty years at fifteen a month. I'm sure. Oof. I know. I I know for a fact you've paid more than that because I know for a fact you're paying for multiple subscriptions at once for many years. No, not many years. Like one or two. What I have okay. that's not that's not what I paid the most money for. I have purchased multiple server transfers for multiple characters to follow yeah, my raiding did. guild around in the past That's right. for server transfers plus plus uh obviously expansions all in oh, we're probably God. looking at easily i mean now That's 20 safe. years oh. 20 years at 15 uh, 20 years i only started playing in 2006 years. to be fair 2006. so yeah we can knock right there we can knock you know we can knock two years off of that that's that's still, still pretty solid. That's still $3,200 God, in, in monthly subscription fees. So we can round, let's round it down heavily <laughs> and say $2,500 in subscription Jesus fees. Christ. Just subscription fees. Let's round and it down. that right and, there, guys, you know that that's why I'm so angry all the time. That's yeah. that's my, the source of my my depthless self hatred. <laughs> and what is what is Blizzard's method of thanking its patrons for giving this? you an Here opportunity you to give them another I'll ninety? Give bucks. you an opportunity to pay us ninety dollars for an in-game product that costs them zero dollars in overhead to create. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's and I even I just found out that there's there's another reigns of. There's Reigns of the Mighty it's not even Caravan a new model. Brutal. It's not even it's a, a new no, yeah, model. Yeah, it's a, it's a skin on an old model. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not even a, I'm shocked that it's not even a new model. It's, it's a just skin. a skin. It's, it's got like a, a headset on, or it's got a helmet on. It's got <laughs> yeah. a cute little iguana face and a helmet on the iguana face. I is mean, the new you, one. Know, it's a, it's you know, it's a cute little, it's a cute looking long boy. I mean, you it's know, to, to be, it to doesn't be, even to be sure, fly. But... It doesn't fly. <laughs> Does it not? Like, why? No, it doesn't fly. Can you imagine if this thing fucking flew? This I mean, dinosaur? I guess, yeah. I wish it just flew like a model, just like no flight animation, just float and take off. I'm fine with that. But uh, is, is <laughs> I mean, they like have that? enough for dick. Like, they have motorcycles. So Right. Do regular mounts have higher ground speed? Don't, oh, isn't there hey, something... dude, we have the new California law taking effect. Buying or purchasing this digital item is a license. Oh, does it say it? Yeah. Where? On the Where bottom of that Wowhead it? page if you scroll down. Wow. Buying or purchasing this uh, digital item is like, here, dude, here we go. This is to your to your point about that. This is my, to the point of my comment on that video. It is impossible for them to isolate this to California, so it's going to be something that they post everywhere. Here And here it is, right here. Uh, oh, so mount, you, not you're available. seeing it also? I'm, yeah, I'm seeing buying or purchasing this digital item is a license. It's just on the Wowhead page. It's not geofenced. Yeah. It would you be, know, dude, yeah, someone, so. someone left a comment the other day 
on that video that I'm surprised I did not think of. First of all, something else that I'm surprised I didn't think of is the all-timer quote, if buying isn't owning, then pirating isn't stealing. And y'all know how we feel about pirating over here on the channel, which is uh, an emphatic do it all the time as much as possible. Yeah, Unless yeah. it's to like small indie devs and mom and pop developers, if you can, totally if you can, story. if you can support them, then absolutely do it. But everybody totally else, steal the fucking shit out of all their stuff. Totally but, different story. Although I think any mom and pop developer who saw someone who literally could not afford the game and was desperate to play it would be like, "Here, take it." They have. They actually. There's instances of them actually uh, doing that. But one of our uh, our um, audience members actually commented on that video and said, "Yeah, all they're gonna have to do." is just take the buy it now button and rename it checkout. That's all oh, right, they have to right, do. Right. That might that might be all they confirm. have to do. Just change it from buy to checkout and then hit confirm. Yeah. And just have it as a blurb in yeah. there. Yeah. And it's just, it's just gonna be in the license agreement that we're all already used to scrolling right the fuck through. Yeah, shout out to whoever that was that he doesn't is <laughs> taking the comment. Without their don't name. Shut the up. Video. I just say I remembered don't, it. All right. Don't have their name. Remember your comment, but not your name. Oh. Just here and flame. L- flame look, away. My, uh, flame my, my big famous YouTuber head is getting too big for my fucking britches. Flame <laughs> on. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh, I think I think that's about all we have to get to today. We've been going for like an hour, which is already longer right. than I thought we were gonna. Well, that's that's fine with me. I think there's a lot going on right now. There's there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening in the gaming world. I got so much going on gaming wise that I still want to talk about later. I've been the other thing. I'm, I'm we, we could wrap it up. I do want to mention that I'm still like as a nightly thing. If I'm not reading or whatever, if I'm not watching a show, I'll pick up my RG thirty five XX and still just trucking through Dragon Quest One remake on Super Famicom, which is so good to pick up. Just run around, kill a few like Drakies and slimes, and then. Put it to sleep. That That's is a it. classic. That is a classic. Um, longtime viewers of the channel will know that that was on NES. That was the first Dragon Warrior, what, what it was, uh, what it was called in the in the states. Yeah. But that was my first RPG, and I tried to name my character Spike because I was like eight or something and thought I was really cool. So I tried to name him Spike, and I accidentally hit O twice. So his name was Spike O. And I could not figure <laughs> out right. how to that's delete true. or change it. So I played Spike all of Ooh. Dragon Warrior 1 with the character named Spike Oo. Spike Oo. <laughs> Spike Oo. And that will always Justice be what Justice for I, Spike Oo. Justice for Spike Oo, dude. So, Justice for Spike Oo. <laughs> so that will always be um, my one of my most fond memories of playing, uh, playing Dragon Warrior. Um, Great game. We also, just in case any of y'all uh, out there are still doing this too, Space Marine 2, in my review, I neglected to mention, just because I hadn't played enough of it, but just how fun the PvE multiplayer operation missions are. Oh, yeah. Me how many and, hours do you think we put in on that? Yeah, me and Bobby have put in, like, probably 50, I would but say. It has to be. It has At to be least. something like that. We played so, so much of it. Yeah, we so both much. have almost maxed out the two character classes that we started with. We are having so, so much fun playing those operations. The new balancing patch is actually really good. So if you have that, if you haven't played them, I encourage you to do so. It's a fucking blast. Some it's, of the it's most great. fun I've had doing multiplayer anything in quite some time, I would say. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's very different. It's not Hell Divers two. If you're expecting that, it's not Hell Divers two. And it's 2. not it's, Dark Tide either. It's not. It's, it's not so. Dark Tide it's either. just. It's it's great PV oriented stuff. I, it does not require voice chat. We had so much fun on voice chat, but you, it doesn't require that level of coordination. I don't think it's yeah. still tough though. The different difficulty levels. It's tough. It's so fun. Once Highly you start recommend raising it. the difficulty levels, it does get it does get tough. And I'm not going to say that you need to use the level of strategy that something like Dark Tide or Hell Divers two requires. But you do need to at least have a good idea of what you're doing to survive in the higher difficulty levels. It is satisfyingly challenging. It is. I still feel like for someone, I feel like I got my money's worth because you and I could voice chat and play it. I feel like without a community, I don't know if I would have felt like I got my 70 worth because I don't know how much of the PvE yeah, I mean, that's I played alone. That's what I said in my that's review. That's my one is that, like yeah. All the other multiplayer options aside – Man, if your main campaign is barely 10 hours, I don't think you have a lot of room to charge people $70 for that. 
No, I've because did we play through my campaign together or did I play it solo? We played no, mine we, together. No, too, no, right? we played through the campaign together, and then we. Yeah, played I've never all the played PvP the game solo. I've only played it together with you, and yeah. so that's that's why I give it such high marks. Uh, but it's still great. It's still great. I like. I would recommend it even yeah, if you really like the any only sort of marks character. like the only reason I marked it down is because the single player campaign is as short as is as short as it is. Other than that. It's almost a flawless action game. It's fucking yeah. And phenomenal. I prefer the I prefer the PVE op strongly because I love the class based. Like you have special move on cooldown. I love that. Oh, and the way that uh, you level up and you can um love, you can tweak going. your loadouts and um, yeah and do like you can get uh you have like little mini talent trees not only for your character class but for your weapons also yeah yeah which is yeah, really awesome. really satisfying to choose Nothing perk points crazy, and stuff from that. But just enough to be motivating and, and exciting yeah because it's nothing too crazy but it does affect your moment-to-moment -moment gameplay which Absolutely. is the bare minimum for any sort of progression system yeah you can have different play styles based on how you uh do your skill trees and i because the game is not some crazy like moba or hell divers i think there are different choices that you can fit to choose your own for your play style and what you think is more fun there's not like a meta uh, there probably is a meta but i don't know oh, there, there definitely like is that. a meta but it's not like there's there were points in Dark Tide's life, uh, in between certain balancing patches and stuff, where like if you weren't following the meta on some of the hardest difficulties like Auric Damnation or something, and you weren't like a FPS god, you were gonna get scuffed. So yeah. it's not mandatory to follow the meta, but there is meta if you want to, which I think is fun. I like that personally. Meta if you want to, I love it. <laughs> All right, boys. Bobby, unless you have anything else, I think that'll do it for today. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. All right, everybody. We love you today. We love you all the way. Thanks so much for chilling. Spend this little bit of your free time with us tonight. Oh, yeah. And tuning in to this brand new episode of the Super Podcast Entertainment System. And we will catch you next week or maybe when I do a video for Friday. We'll see. Anyway, love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bobby, say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.